man, there is something about once you have a child, it, it makes life so raw and it's so animalistic in some ways. And it really brought into like clarity for me the distinction in our roles um, emotionally and physically and what that means within our marriage. And God's design, like I said, just be, has become so magical and apparent through the dynamic of our relationship parenting together. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video. I am Nikki. Hi. For those of you that are new to my channel or just checking out this video, I am excited that you're here. So today, this video is unlike a video, any video that I've done in a while now. So if you've been watching my channel for a while now, for any length of time, you know, or maybe you don't know, maybe I'm just telling you, I have actually been on YouTube now for like 12 years, which is actually crazy. My channel and all of my channels have been through many evolutions, just like I have as a person. In a lot of ways, I'm the same person that I was when I started YouTube. And in a lot of ways, I'm a different person for a lot of different reasons. And I changed through like multiple seasons of my life. When I first started YouTube, one of the earliest things that I did, and I did it for years, and those of you that have been around for a long time definitely know this, but I used to have a series and actually a whole channel called Ask Nikki. Now, I'm not qualified to give anybody any advice. Let me just throw that out there. I am not a relationship expert. I'm not actually an expert in anything. Let's just be real. I'm not an expert in anything. But I am an avid, <laughs> this is about to sound lame. I am an avid relationship book consumer. I find social interaction interesting. I was actually actively working with a therapist for a few years. And part of what I really enjoyed about that was the ability to sit down and really like dive into a situation and analyze it. And so because of that, I've always found it really interesting to talk about relationship dynamics and growing up, side note, I was really into Dr. Laura Schlesinger, Schlesinger, however you say her name. And I still am like, I don't listen to her stuff regularly, although we will talk about one of her books in this. Um, but like every once in a while I'll hear her and I'm like, yeah, Dr. Laura, like that's what's up. She is definitely on the harsher side of like advice. Like I knew people growing up who did not like Dr. Laura. Um, I loved Dr. Laura. That's actually kind of what I liked about her. I, I like that she's very just to the point with her opinion and, um, yeah, I don't know. I've, I've liked a lot of advice that I've gleaned from her over the years. So that being said, I'm going to dive into this video because I had gotten a lot of requests from you guys to do another like wife talk video. And like I said, I've talked a fair amount over the years about marriage and just being a wife and relationships, but it's been a minute since I've done this and diving in, this is kind of an excessive amount of points. So it's going to be interesting to see how long this video is. And if I actually have the ability to stay on track and like just hit each point really important before we get in to this, besides the fact that I'm not an expert, every relationship is going to be different in my opinion, because every person is different and therefore every match of people is going to be very unique and very different. And this is something that I'll talk about in here as well. Like it's part of the points that I want to cover. Um, but yeah, not an expert. Every relationship is different. If something I say doesn't vibe with you, just, uh, just ignore it. Or my favorite saying, eat the fish, spit out the bones, take what you want, leave what you don't. And last but not least in regards to the video, if you have any advice that you feel like you would like to chime into the mix, because I feel like I have a lot of viewers that have been like married for a minute and I would love to hear your thoughts. Ooh, baby is kicking. By the way, I am currently 33 weeks pregnant. This is what we have going on people. So yeah, feel free and please do, um, leave your tips down below because I want the comment section to be like a resource section. Last but not least, this is last but not least, if you are new to my channel and you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you can be notified every time that I upload. So let's dive in now to 16 things that I've learned in 16 years of marriage. How have I been married to Dan for 16 years? This is actually crazy. So thing number one is that life is hard and it's harder than I thought. 
And that may sound really naive. And in a lot, in some ways it's not harder than I thought. That was part of like, I've talked about this before. Dan and I, like I said, got married 16 years ago and we have been together now for basically half of our lives. And I was really, even though I got married, we got married young. I was 20, he was 21. We were really nervous. And I feel like a big part of the reason we were really nervous is because we didn't necessarily go into marriage with that like butterfly roses, like everything's going to be perfect. We were actually pretty scared because we felt like we had been presented in our own ways with this idea of like, Hey, life is hard. Marriage is serious. It's going to be tough. And, um, so we didn't really have that, but I will say this, even when you know that going in and this isn't, you know, to scare you, this is just something I've learned. Even when you know that going in, you know, life is full of surprise curveballs, and it's hard. And when you hit those hard times, you know, what I found is like, wow, two different people who process life very differently going through emergencies or trauma, um, it definitely creates for a growing experience because getting through those hard seasons um, can really change you as a person. And so that's the first thing I learned. Life is hard, harder than I thought in some ways. So I guess my message to you is kind of expect it. Not to expect doom and gloom by any means, just knowing that like life has hardships in it. It's just inevitable and it's gonna be different things, different crosses that we're all gonna have to bear. Okay, number two. God's design for marriage and partnership is divine. Dan's support for me as a mom. I mean, we spent, oh, I mean, 12 years together before we ever had, Lo you know, children, Logan. Um, and then obviously I had the miscarriage last year and now I'm pregnant again. And so Dan and I had spent a lot of time, just the two of us really like partners by ourselves. And I always felt so much support and love and encouragement. And like we were teammates, but man, oh, and now I talked about this on my Patreon, which if you want to check that out, I will link that down below. I uploaded kind of like an accompanying podcast to go with this all about this concept of being a trad wife. Anyways, you know, Dan's support for me has always been very evident, but man, there is something about once you have a child, it, it makes life so raw and it's so animalistic in some ways. And it really brought into like clarity for me, the distinction in our roles, um, emotionally and physically and what that means within our marriage and God's de design, like I said, just be has become so magical and apparent through the dynamic of our relationship parenting together. And by the way, should I have mentioned at the beginning that all of these are in no particular order? I'm just going to throw that out there. So number three, you have to prioritize each other in my opinion. And for us over work, over hobbies, over other relationships, I think that the marriage dynamic should be kind of like the cornerstone of your life or like of all of your other relationships. Because if you really are becoming one, then you're building this life together. And yes, you're going to have different roles, but by prioritizing, you know, your husband, by prioritizing each other and making it the most important human relationship you have, I think it just sets you up not only for a fulfilling close marriage, but also for building a strong family dream and a family culture. Ooh, I'm having a contraction. E uh -huh. I had to learn this lesson really early on in our marriage because when we got married, even though we got married super young, I had already been working for six years at that point. I started working when I was 14. And so when we first got married, I've mentioned this before, our first year of marriage was one of our hardest years for all of the different reasons. You know, we, we were living together. That was new being intimate together. That was new. And then like I mentioned work, uh, work was something that I didn't even really realize till I got married. Married, I had it like one of my top priorities, if not the top. And it became apparent in that year, like, oh, I have to adjust and refocus my priority, the priority priorities. And my priority was Dan, not my work. And it became very clear in that year, that was a rhyme, that if I didn't 
prioritize our relationship, that our relationship wasn't going to last. Now, I could say that's especially because entertainment can be kind of like an all-consuming career, but I don't even think that's true. I think that's just relational dynamics. And actually, that could lead me off onto this whole other tangent that I'm not going to go on because we're trying to hit all the 16 things that I learned. But this whole concept of like the industrial revolution actually taking men out of the homes in kind of unnatural ways. And this idea of like going farther back pre the American war for independence or like early on after America had gained its independence, how many people owned their own businesses and, or were, were tradesmen. Yeah. So like I said, I'm not going to go off on that whole tangent, but that is kind of part of it as well was both of us really realizing very early on, like, wow, how is this going to work if we're like apart from each other all the time? And you know, so that, that was actually a big, uh, part of launching us towards this idea of like integrated family living and, and business ownership as a family and taking our skills and our interests and our passions and monetizing them in a way that gave us flexibility and could serve our family. So that being said though, really backing up, it's that the relationship has to be the priority because everything else that stems off of, off of that, your home life, your business and your work life, uh, the time that you're able to have with friends and family, like the support that you have with your husband is going to be a big part of what enables those things and inspires those things in my opinion. So yeah. Number four, our relationship is what it is by the grace of God. So I just have to throw this tip in here. Like I said, everything was in no particular order. That probably should have been the very first tippity top tip. Um, but really saying that with the acknowledgement of like, I can give you guys all of these tips and I pray that the Lord moves through my words to help you think about what makes sense in your marriage. But, um, also I just have to say like, it's the grace of God. You know, it makes me nervous. I used to give advice so freely and it's a whole long thing, but I have to say now, a lot of times when I give advice, there's like a, there's like a humil humility, like a humble fear of like, Oh Lord. Oh, please. Uh, I don't even know how to explain it. I just don't, I just want you guys to be aware that like our relationship, really all good things. It's the grace of God. Okay. Number five. And I kind of mentioned this at the beginning. There is no one size fits all for marriage. Every relationship dynamic is different. And I, I highlighted this in the beginning because you're bringing two different people, mixing them together from two different family backgrounds, two different interests, two different ways of processing things. Your husband is a man, you are a woman, very different. And it's really about finding out the dynamic that works within your marriage. Now there are general principles or good advice, things that I've really appreciated listening to and learning from over the years. I mentioned, uh, Dr. Laura Schlesinger. She has a book called the proper care and feeding of husbands. And it's a good perspective. Like I said, she's, some people find her a little harsh. I find her thoughts very helpful, encouraging all of that. So that book was good. There's a book called love and respect that I think is really good. The five love languages. Now I will say a lot of these books, and I talked through this in therapy with my therapist, a lot of these books have things in them that maybe like, I don't agree with certain elements or eh, maybe I think it's a little different than that, but it's still so helpful. Um, in terms of making you think about things that maybe you're like, I never even thought about that. Um, yeah, just very encouraging. And I will say, because I believe that the Bible is not only history, you know, parables, different stories, but also like a spiritual tool. I believe that by staying in the word and praying for and trying to cultivate the fruits of the spirit, let's see, I feel like I can never remember them all. Love, joy, peace, patience, patience, gentleness, kindness, goodness, self-control. I'm definitely forgetting something, but I believe that those can be cultivated almost supernaturally by choosing to pursue relationship with the Lord and read the Bible. Okay. So number six is find shared interests and things that you can learn from each other. Now, you know, once again, it's going to be different for everyone. Some people really like being physical together. Some people like doing projects together. I will say Dan and I are very much like thought wrestlers. We're very much in our heads. And so a lot of our shared interests and the things that we learn from each other comes through our like conversational wrestling and engagement. We have, we are both very interested in specific, like 
deep topics like God and morality and history and the way that culture changes and politics to a degree. We just find it you know, interesting, um, how children learn like childhood development. We find that interesting. So a lot of our shared interests are actually, like I said, just thought stuff. Like I'm not into UFC. Sorry. I, I remember when I would hear women talk about this, like fine. I'm like, I can't, I don't, I will never be into UFC. Even when Dan, this is a good example too, to those of you that don't know, Dan has raced NASCAR professionally. He did, um, the Canon pro series and he's yeah just done races. He hasn't raced in years now. Side note, we were just talking about this the other day, but when Dan was racing, I loved it for him that he was racing. I was kind of the reason that Dan started racing. It's a whole long story. I actually like to think I'm majorly a big reason why Dan started racing and I was so happy for him and I encouraged him to do it, but I like, don't care about NASCAR. I like, don't care about driving in a circle. And that's not me trying to be rude. I get why it's cool. I understand like the whole, like all oh, the aerodynamics and finding your line on the track and why even just like a tiny split second of a difference in your lap can add up as the laps go. Like it's cool, but I'm not into it. And, but what I am into is pontificating, <laughs> thinking about things. And so, and Dan is too. And we have found a lot of common ground through the things that we like to pontificate on. And it will turn into sometimes like low key wrestling matches, like mind wrestling matches, because we are so into like, well, what's the truth? What about this? What about that? Um, and the cool thing is by finding your shared interests and continuing to like encourage them in each other and learn from each other. I mean, that's a big part of how you stay close. So like as life changes and unfolds and hard things happen and blessings happen, um, you're able to just connect in that way and continue to grow hopefully and dream together. So kind of on that same note, talking about Dan's NASCAR situation is be on the lookout for your husband's gifts, talents, abilities, interests, and encourage them. Um, I want to say like for me, something I've been really going out of my way lately to do, cause I noticed I hadn't been doing it as much lately is using my words to tell Dan what I think about the decisions that he's making, the things that he's doing for our family, the stuff he's building and creating around the house. And I, you know, that's kind of part of it, right? Taking like a self check on where you're at in your relationship or how you think you're kind of showing up to the table. And a lot of times in the past words have been, that's like my go-to, like I just said, I'm a talker, but I did realize recently, I was like, I'm not, I don't think I'm giving him enough like verbal encouragement, um, around his gifts and just telling him I support him. And really we do that for each other. And we have done that for each other throughout our whole marriage. That's a big reason. I think we've been able to create and do certain things, but yeah, taking an inventory on that is important. And I think that by pointing out your husband's gifts, pointing out each other's gifts and skills and strengths, I think also helps to really build trust between the both of you, because it can be kind of, I don't know, it's intimate and it's life wondering if you're enough, wondering if you, you know, can show up and do what's asked of you. And I know that men, I've, I hear this, that men will wonder this a lot, that it's like, can I do this? And so by telling them that you think that they can, by asking them to hear, asking to hear more about their dreams, by pointing out like, Hey, you're really good at that. I really think, like I said, it fosters trust and it helps you guys work towards building a joint family vision together by noticing each other's strengths, by pointing out your husband's strengths. Uh, it just, I think helps you build that joint family vision. Number eight, kids are an asset, a blessing and a miracle. And I have to say, I've known that I've known that forever. I've always thought kids are, it's a miracle. Like what I mean, and that's to me, I always wanted a family. You guys know, even before Oh, my hair is driving me crazy. Even before, um, I wasn't sure, you know, if I was even going to have any biological children, we were going down the path towards adoption. And even at that, you know, I always wanted a family, even all the years that we didn't have children, we weren't pursuing growing our family. I wanted a family, but the thing is, and I've said this before, and this is one component of so many components to our adoption journey. But one of the things that I didn't understand. Well, first off the whole asset part, literally 
kids are an asset. They, they bring, I think kids are often seen as like a, like a negative, like, Oh, if you have kids, they're going to be taking your money, taking your food, taking your time, taking from your body, all these things. And I guess that's true. But what I didn't realize was true until I had kids is it's like, but the, the asset, the pluses that they bring to your life. And he's only three. He's not, well, four now. Oh my gosh. He's not even like a real like working member of the household, but just being here, he is an asset. He brings so much joy to our lives. He makes us think about things in new and different ways. Um, and he makes us, and I mean that not only about life, but even like how we explain things or execute things. Like he just makes us approach them differently. For a long time, I had this thought of like, what's the big deal about duplicating my own DNA? Like who cares? You know, there's kids that need homes, which of course I still, I've talked about this. There are children that do need homes and that's a separate topic. But the topic of what's the big deal about duplicating my DNA, whew, I feel like I was fooled by the devil, for lack of a better phrase. That might be the perfect phrase because procreating, bringing a child into the world is the most crazy magical thing I've ever done. And I just, I'm so grateful that God allowed me to hold his hand and experience that. And I'm so grateful to be experiencing it again, even though it's been insanely hard. Um, I'm just grateful. Number nine, stay focused on the positive attributes that your husband has and remind yourself of them regularly. Um, and it's not like, oh, just keep reminding him yourself. He's a good man, right? Like you're, and you're just ignoring all these things. But I think that sometimes it's easy. First off, it's easy to just we focus on, when we focus on something, we're going to see more of it. We may even bring more of it about like coming to fruition because we're focusing on it, but also blackberry sparkly lemonade that I made from home, by the way, from scratch, lemon juice, honey, blackberry juice that I squeezed with some blackberries that were going bad. Delicious. In Geraldine water, by the way. Yeah. You guys have probably heard this before that you're, that you're always going to find more of what you're looking for. Or like maybe you've heard people say that when they were shopping for a certain car, they suddenly noticed that car everywhere on the roads. And I think the same thing can happen with relationships is when you choose to focus on the bad, you could see more of it or possibly, like I said, even bring more of it out versus focusing on the good and reminding yourself and, you know, focusing on like, why did you pick this person? Because everything in life, every person, every place you live, every church you ever go to, every family, there's going to be good and there's going to be bad. That just kind of is what it is. And so I think that's another really important reason to focus on the good because you really can, and I'm not talking obviously, right, about like actual bad situations. I'm talking about just normal relationships. It can be easy to lose that focus, um, especially over time. We all hear that, right? Like it's easy to take, take for granted the people that you love. And this kind of falls in that same vein. So yeah. Number 10, take what you want from your parents dynamic and leave the rest. Even if your parents have an amazing marriage and there's a lot that you admire, it's important to reflect back on maybe things that you would like to do differently versus just accepting that like whatever you saw with your parents is just how it's got to be. That's just marriage. A, your husband is coming from a totally different family, totally different background. Um, that isn't just how marriage is. Every marriage is actually different. And B, like I said, even if the marriage was great, like you are your own marriage, you are your own relationship with your husband. And you don't want to be holding some unrealistic imaginary bar for your husband to hit that he can't, he never will because he's not your dad, you're not your mom. You guys are your own family, your own relationship dynamic. And, you know, two people coming in potentially being unaware that they're going to be trying to like mimic their parents' marriage. And then it's never going to be that. That could be really frustrating. And so obviously I'm always an advocate for talking things out, but even just thinking for yourself, like what are things that my parents did that like, I liked that. Like, I want to keep that. And what are things that maybe like, you know, I want to do that differently for my family. It's worth thinking about. And it's a long, like a long, thoughtful <laughs> in your brain conversation, actual conversation. It's not something you have to like decide right now. Uh, but that's something, yeah, that I learned. We are our own marriage. We're not his parents' marriage, my parents' marriage, and we have our own 
beautiful dynamic and our own beautifully hard things. And yeah, it's that whole eat the fish, spit out the bones thing. Did I say number 12? I think I skipped number 11. We'll go back. Uh, don't forget that you are a team. You are not like an individual against an individual. This is something that Dan and I, even though we've always been a team from the beginning, it's really weird in fights. And maybe sometimes, honestly, we still get, we still struggle with this, but it's like, it can become this vibe of like, we're against each other. Like you versus me versus like, no, 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 no. It's us together. We are a team. Let's figure this out. Let's not... <laughs> do any low blows. Let's not be rude to each other. It's really just this idea of like, you are not against each other. So number 13 I have is honor, respect, and acknowledge the gifts that your husband ha has and that he brings to the table. Now I talked about this a little bit in my Patreon podcast that I uploaded because it kind of falls into the line of like submission, which I know is like the crazy word that, you know, comes up in Christianity. Like, what does it mean as a wife to submit? And I talked about in the podcast how I don't fully know, but I gave kind of my idea of what it was. And I will say kind of this shortened little thought off of that, that ties into this, that men and women are different. And on top of men and women being different, you probably married your opposite. And the thing is, if you strip away all of modernity, right? The electricity, the cameras, the internet, the easy access to food. And we really think about like being kind of more level back out in nature. It's very evident to me, at least in my dynamic with my husband, that he is like a, a provider and a caretaker for me. And so even though that man will always hear my thoughts around things because I think that's the point, right? We're meant to like bounce thoughts off of each other, share things, build together. If I really feel heard by Dan and seen by Dan and at the end of it, he still has reservations or he says, I don't think we should do that. Then to me, honoring his strengths, his gifts, his mind, all of that is like submitting in the sense of like, not just push, 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 push till I get a yes. But it's like, okay, there's a reason he's pausing. I'm going to pray that either God changes his heart and maybe he needs to, he can sit and simmer and stew and all that, or that God's going to change my heart. Or we're just going to pause this right now. Cause he's not on board. And like I said earlier, we're a team. And so that's really what we want is like the teamwork, not me just like plowing through. So, um, yeah, part of honoring his strengths and his gifts is kind of submitting in that sense of being like, Oh yes, it's both of us. It's not just me. And I trust you as like someone, my husband who has different strengths than me, like I said, different awarenesses of things than me, not better, not worse, different. And I think that it takes humility to realize like he's got a different perspective on this and it's important. Um, and I may feel like, no, this is what's right, but it might not be what's right. And so Take a chill pill, Nikki. Hold on. I don't even know where I'm going with this. I'm stammering off this point on to the next point. Okay, so even though I said to make your relationship like the cornerstone above work, above hobbies, because that's what's going to be guiding your life, potentially even your work and your hobbies, or definitely your work and your hobbies, um, what I wanted to say also is do not give up on your hobbies, your passions, your skill sets. Keep setting goals for yourself and keep dream building together. And in that dream building, include your passions, your skills, your creativity. I believe that God made all of us, but I know I'm talking to wives, um, but all of us to work with our hands and follow the desires of our hearts and the gifts that God's given us. And by doing that, by continuing to cultivate your gifts, by getting better and better at the skills that you do have, that you want to hone more, really what you're doing is you're bringing value to the whole family. You're not only continuing to bring value to yourself. This is something like when people get all weird about marriage, like, what are you going to do if he dies, you know, or he leaves you, which I think is a super weird, pessimistic perspective anyways. Cause I don't know, should everything be broached that way? I don't know. You do things, you put up safety, whatever life insurance, whatnot, but caring for your skills, your mind, your heart, your soul is kind of part of that. Like you're still, you're a person, you're, you're your own person, but you're not because you're part of, you're a team. It is about your home. God has made you together to be one, but by 
focusing on, like I said, goals around those skills, strengthening your skill sets, you're really helping to bring value to your whole family, to the family economy, to what you can bring to your kids, like what you can teach them, to who just who you are as a person in your family dynamic, to potentially income that you can bring into the family. Um, just don't stop pursuing and strengthening your artistic desires and skills and creative endeavors and all of that. Okay. I think we have three more. I'm kind of losing track because I accidentally wrote a couple doubles and then had to like skip over them. So one of them or one of the next tip, whatever number we're on, I think we're on like 14 intimacy, physical intimacy, even emotional intimacy, but I'm talking about physical intimacy ebbs and flows. There are seasons. And I mean, it makes sense, right? Like life has a lot that can happen physically, emotionally, spiritually. You're not always necessarily going to feel the same level of like physical intimacy or attractiveness or even that desire in like in all seasons. It, it will change. And that's okay, in my opinion. I think it's actually good to know, not only like physically, sometimes even relationally, that like there are going to be seasons. My mom used to say this where you look over and you're like, whoa. Like, who did I marry in like a moment of chaos? And then in other seasons and moments, it's like, wow, how did I get to marry you? And that's not to like, we really want to encourage, I'm not trying to like encourage like this erratic, emotional, whatever. That's more to say, it's kind of expected that emotions can be fickle and go up and down sometimes. And along with that, uh, just intimacy can change. And that's not always for fickle reasons, you know, that intimacy is changing. There are seasons, like I said, physical boundaries, emotional things that are happening. Um, and it's okay. So yeah, intimacy can ebb and flow. The next thing I learned is to apologize and to accept apologies. Um, you know, when your husband apologizes to you, accept the apology, especially especially this is obvious, right? But if you feel it's a genuine apology, don't hold that over him. Don't hold that away from him. Seek reconciliation. Now I think it is okay to want actual reconciliation, to want to actually be heard by the person, not just, not, not just like, Oh yeah, sorry. And you're like, I don't even feel like you get what I was saying. Like, like it's normal to want to be heard. But when that apology comes, you know, you want to like move on. You want to let it go and move on. And that's easier said than done. And I am definitely someone that like, I have to like land the plane. It has to be like a closed thing, but, um, yeah, forgive. And along those same lines, like I said, also apologize. I am very bad at apologizing. Not really in the sense that I will apologize, but <laughs> it's a whole thing. Should I go off on a whole thing? I have a hard time sometimes apologizing if I don't think I did anything wrong. And most of the time I don't really want to apologize if I don't think I did anything wrong, but in that same, well, A, sometimes I was listening to a pastor recently. Sometimes the apology isn't even because you think you did anything wrong, but it's that maybe it's just apologizing for the way that you delivered something, for the way that your spirit was engaged in that conversation, or because you know, like, I don't want this between us. I want us to be good. That being said, in general, I try to take notice of when I feel that nudging from the Lord, like, just go say you're sorry. And Dan is so good to me because like, it doesn't take much, just me coming to him and saying, I'm really sorry. It's like he knows and senses instantly, like this was hard. This took effort. This took humility. And I mean it. Um, and he accepts my apologies quicker, even quicker than I do. He also apologizes quicker than I do. And, uh, yeah, go Dan. And the very last thing I've learned is that it's very important to stay flexible. There is, I mean, I feel like this verse pops up in different versions kind of all over the Bible, but specifically in Proverbs basically says that you, man makes his plans, but God directs his path. Um, or there's like a not verse way of saying it, but it's like, you make your plans and God laughs. <laughs> it's like you, God directs our paths and it is important to dream and make plans. Yeah, have plans and make dreams. It's important, but it's also equally important in my experience and opinion to have your hands open to whatever God has for you because I truly believe that he knows what's best for us and oh, life can be hard. Um, so it's important to just like stay flexible, stay grateful for every day you get with your partner because nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed. So stay grateful, stay flexible, 
dream together, but ultimately have your hands open and your heart open to knowing that like, Hey, God's plans are better than mine. And I make my plans. He directs my steps, um, our steps. But I guess thinking about like myself and my own accountability in a relationship in a marriage, you know what I'm saying? I feel like my tips could have kept going in some ways, guys, you know, like I had written down about focusing on your relationship with the Lord and the fact that God is essentially the third person in the relationship. Like both of you should be focusing on the Lord. And so, but really you developing your relationship with God is just paramount to all of it. And Dan and I talk a lot about God and our theology and you know, what that looks like being lived out. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I just feel like I could have kept going. I could have talked a little bit about therapy, how therapy can be helpful, but it's really, really important that if you're seeing a therapist, that both parties feel that trusting open vibe towards the therapist. It's not like one person being like, they're great. They're great. Come on, trust me. And the other person feels like no trust towards the person. Now we want, but, um, yeah. So really what a strange video in some ways I could have kept going in other ways. I was like 16 things. Is that excessive? I don't know. So I am going to go now, please give this video a thumbs up. If you liked it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will link my Patreon down below. If you want to go check out the trad wife podcast that I did over there and I will God willing see you guys back here soon with another new video. Bye guys.